Hello, and welcome to the latest episode of How to Paint. The channel's really kicking off, and I really appreciate everybody's support. If you haven't already, please consider subscribing, and uh, let's get into the video. So today we're painting Luke and R2-D2 from the Fearless and Inventive Squad Pack. I'm going to start things off by assembling the miniatures, and I'm going for the throne room Luke. I'm using plastic glue to assemble these. And I'm assembling one of the arms. I'm not going to put the other arm in because I still want access to the face. And then I'm using super glue here to attach them to the base. And I'm doing the same for R2D2 and I'm going for his sail barge drinks serving tray thing as well. Okay, I'm going to be using my normal prime method, so I'm covering all of the miniatures in black first. And then I'm spraying from white from above here. You could build up to a grey and then a white, but I like the stark contrast between the black and the white. And then I use blue tack putty just to keep the arm in place. So before I begin any kind of details, I'm starting off with some eyes here. So I'm using a very light grey just to dot in some of the whites of the eyes. I like to do it in this early stage because we can correct it with the flesh tones. And we're going to be using Bugman's Glow. And I'm just covering all of the face with this as a base coat. I'm taking care around the eyes here. I don't want to ruin the work I've already got, but I'm just making sure that I'm just going smaller and smaller just to kind of thin out those pupils. And I'm also applying this to the hand as well. For the hair, I'm using hardened leather. This is a speed paint, so just a very quick base coat on here. Okay, now we're going to start highlighting, so I'm using pink flesh. And you can see on the palette, I've got the pink flesh and the Bugman's Glow. I'm mixing the two together to make a mid-tone. And I'm applying this to most of the face. I'm leaving some of the Bugman's Glow around the hair, but most of it's covered with that. And now I'm switching just to pure pink flesh. And I'm applying this to a slightly smaller surface area. Now I'm using Pale Skin, and same principle, I uh, mix the Pale Skin in with the Pink Flesh first to make that mid-tone you can see there. And I'm just building up those highlights, going smaller and smaller until I reach the very tip of his nose and chin and things like that. You can do as many layers as you like, as long as you just keep building up in that tone. And now this is the pure pale skin, and I'm just applying this just to the edges of his chin and his nose. And this is the smallest possible place on the face that I'm applying this to. And lastly, I'm going back in with some of that mid-tone pink flesh and just Take, toning down some of those highlights just a little bit. And I'm just going to use a little bit of fuchsia here. I'm mixing this with some of that Bugman's Glow Flesh Tone to make a uh, slightly pink lip color. And just a quick line across the lips here.
And it's the same idea for the hand. I don't need to do as many layers on the hand, so I'm probably just going to do the, the main three colors and not the in-between mixes. Okay, I'm using Mournfang Brown. And the same principle, I'm going to start applying this to the hair. I'm keeping this to the kind of upper hemisphere of the hair. And then XV88 here, which is a brighter tone for his hair. I'm just still applying these tones, building up in contrast. And I've taken some of that pale skin, I've mixed it with the XV88, and I'm just applying this as a slightly brighter highlight to his hair. And lastly, this is just pale skin as the smallest highlight. And the last little detail here, I just used some Mournfang Brown and I'm just drawing on a couple of eyebrows. And once I'm happy with the face, I'm going to glue on the other arm. Okay, now for the bodysuit, we're going to be using some Grim Black and Speed Paint. I think this was a 2 to 1 mix. I wanted it fairly black still, but I just wanted some of those ridges to show through. I'm applying this to the legs, the chest, the arms, uh, the glove, the belt, everything. And I'm going to prep his saber for some fluorescent paints, so I'm just doing an undercoat of white. And I'm using Tesseract Glow for this. You can see it's really saturated, and uh, I'm just doing a single coat on here, and then this is a damp brush, just pulling away from that um, hilt. Okay, now I'm mixing up a combination of black, gray, and white. And I'm going to be doing the same thing as the face, just kind of building up those layers. Uh, you could leave this as a contrast if you wanted to, um, but I just wanted to boost this up just a hair. So that was a dark gray, and now I'm just applying a step up in tone. And this is a kind of medium gray. and a mid-tone gray here. And I don't really want to go any brighter than this for the suit, but I do for any of the leather, like the boots and the belt. So as long as I limit myself to this gray as my highlight, I'll be happy. And I'm using some of that dark gray again just to tidy up some of those edges. And this does take a while, but I'm just slowly working my way around the miniature, highlighting up to a medium gray. I'm using the contrast paint as kind of a road map, so anywhere that the contrast paint is showing lighter than the normal black that it was, I'm using that as an area to highlight. And then for the boots and any other kind of leather, I'm doing it up to that normal medium gray, and then I'm taking it two or three steps further up to a pure white. So this is kind of a light gray here. And then some pure white highlights. I've forgotten the belt, so I'm just doing some quick highlights on those as well. For the saber, it's just a medium grey here, just to kind of give the illusion.
And now I'm using a speed metal. And I'm applying this to any of the buckles and straps and things that need it. The belt buckle as well. And I've decided to do some object source lighting from the lightsaber. So I'm using some of that tesseract glow and I'm applying this to some of the edges of the suit and the side of his face as well. I don't want to go too heavy because I don't want his face to just to be green. So I'm just gently applying very thin layers until I'm happy with it. And then lastly, I mixed up some white in with that tesseract glow and I'm just applying this softly to the brightest part of the saber here. And then to match these bases with the rest of my Shatterpoint minis, I'm doing a dark grey on there. And then I'm dry brushing a grey and then a dry brush of a white on top of that. The last thing I do here, I've got a really watered down blue that I use and I'm just applying this very gently just to add some variation to the metal. And then I use a damp brush and feather the edges of that. Okay, and to finish out Luke, I'm just going to paint the rim of the base black. Now for R2-D2, we're going to be using some deck tan. And I'm just really quickly applying this to the whole body of R2-D2. And I'm not too worried about getting full coverage on him. For the dome, I'm going to be attempting a non-metallic metal finish, so I'm just using a pretty dark grey for the base coat here. I'm using Seraphim Sepia, and I'm just applying this wash to the whole body. I kind of want the appearance of like, kind of a sandy R2-D2, so I'm using this kind of brown wash just to kind of give that impression. And then I'm going back to the deck tan and I'm using this to basically cover most of the miniature back up again. Uh, I'm just using this to get some of these panels and some of the ridges, but I'm just taking care just to leave some of the corners still with that Seraphim Sepia wash intact. And now I'm using some pure white and I'm just going in and hitting all the ridges and things that are protruding. I'm making sure I'm getting all these panels and things up to a pure white. Again, this is a pretty slow process, but hopefully it will pay off. Okay, so now for the dome. Uh, this is a non-metallic metal look. So I'm gonna just be painting some highlights to kind of give the impression of a shiny metal. The principle is the same as the flesh highlights that we did on Luke and the suit highlights, but we're just gonna make sure those highlights are really um, more pronounced. So you can see I'm just building up in those tones, just switching out for a lighter and lighter gray until eventually I reach a white. And then I'm just making sure that some of these white highlights are much more pronounced. I also mixed up a near black and I'm just using this for some of the shadows here. Just pushing and pulling and just playing with the paint until I'm happy with it. And now I'm using a dark blue. 
and I'm just applying this to all the panels. There's a lot of detail work here, so just take your time and uh, try to get as accurate as possible. If I end up making any mistakes, I just go back to the white and just try to cover those up. For the main lens eye, I've used a kind of medium gray, and I'm just applying a semicircle of that to the underside, and then a bright white highlight for the top. Now I'm going to give some of that blue a boost, so I'm using Calador sky and I'm just applying this as a highlight to those blue panels I'm trying to match it to the brightest points on the silver dome as well and I've got a main highlight running down the front so I'm just applying this to all of the strips of blue down the front of R2D2 and getting his legs as well. For the cables on his feet, you could use a copper or something, but I just used a brown. That's the Mornfang brown. And then I used um, the XV88 again and a pale skin highlight. And to make my life a little easier, <laughs> on the uh, drinks holder, I'm using the Victorian Brass Metallic. I could have done a brown, but I just wanted to finish this up pretty quick. And this is Old Copper for the cup on the side. And then I'm going to cover the whole drinks thing with Agrax Earth Shade. And I'm just taking care not to get it onto R2 himself. Just very gently applying that to the, the holders around his shoulders there. Okay, for the drinks dispenser, I'm just going to dry brush a pretty quick chrome kind of highlight on him. So this is a uh, light gray, and then I'm just covering the whole thing again with grim black. And while I'm waiting for that to dry, I'm just getting the base started here. To finish out the drinks holder, I'm just using Elven Gold and just quickly applying that to most of the edges. Focusing back on the drinks dispenser, I'm dry brushing a grey back on and then while I'm still dry brushing <laughs> I'm dry brushing the base and some very quick highlights with white. And here's that nice blue tint I'm adding to the metal and a black on the rim of the base. And to finish out R2-D2 we're using Baharoth Blue and I'm just carefully applying this to all of the lights on his front and back here. And then a dab of Mephiston Red for the light on the front.
And there you have it, R2-D2 and Luke Skywalker, ready to hit the table for Star Wars Shatterpoint. Once again, I'm so grateful of all the recent support. If you haven't already, please feel free to subscribe, like, comment what you think, and I would love to do more in this series. As always, I will see you in the next one. Happy painting and happy gaming.